Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I've been doing a lot of shooters lately and that's been mostly the coverage that you've seen on the channel, but I actually come from an MMO background and I actually do a lot of variety streaming today. So we're gonna be covering a game that's actually surprised me that's not a shooter, but it is a co-op survival game and I had an absolute blast with it. So before we go any further, my name is Gumrak and we're gonna be covering Enshrouded today. With that information, I wanted to point out that we actually have 922 subs of the 1,000 that we're trying to get for the year. If it wasn't for you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. So if you consider hitting that subscription button so I can continue you bringing you content just like this, it's greatly appreciated and thank you very much. Make sure you hit the bell notification to know whenever I put up a new video because I do work a 9 to 5 and my videos are kind of sparse at the moment. Which brings me to the topic at hand, which is Enshrouded. Enshrouded surprised us with a demo for NextFest that continued to run until October 22nd, which is today for some of you folks. I was a little shocked that they were handing out the demo to content creators as a point of coverage, but then I saw why when you actually logged into the game and you noticed that they gave you a very hefty 10 or 12 hours to play the game. It has a timer that's rolling down in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll try to put up some footage so that you can actually see the timer, but it'll be throughout the entire game coverage, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to see exactly what I mean. The world that we're in this time is called Embervale, and it's been lost to a very strong lust and greed for magical power. The ancestors on the world basically unleashed a pestilence that consumed the entire world and either to control these resources. Being that you're awoken by the Great Flame, it's safe to say that you're kind of part of a system that was put into place in either to try and save the world. You can tell this by some of the various pods after you wake up that there are others just like you, which just stems to the story that they've tried this over and over and over again and attempt to save the world. It's a neat concept and kind of basic for the idea and premise of the story, but it sets the tone really early so it lets you know exactly what the game is gonna be like once you go into it knowing a description and you see the first opening scenes. From there, you have your basic game tutorial that's gonna walk you through a small dungeon and kind of teach you the points of combat and how to select things and climb and interact and so forth. It's pretty normal stuff that you see for almost any survival game, which includes coming out on the other side and then learning how to build. Building is a big part of this game. So much so that even the developers take time out of their schedule to check out the buildings that are being done inside of their beta and create a video for it on their YouTube page. Some of the things that are made are actually truly incredible. One of the things that makes this actually possible is the fact that it's a voxel game. So you can actually drill through some mountainsides, rock, and even right through the earth to build some pretty incredible structures without even building and building itself. You can put something right in the side of a mountain. There are a few assets that are actually one piece and they don't allow you to break them apart. But for the most part, you can pretty much dig or build anywhere you want. I'll even put some footage up above of me drilling directly through a rock face and out to the other side, just to see if I could do it. You'll notice directly after that, right underneath me is what we call the lowlands inside of the game. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at the overall map, any of the shrouded areas seem to always be lower on the map side than everything else. It's almost as if they created the top layer and then carved out the lowlands in either to have the enshrouded area. I don't hate it, but it's pretty obvious. Because of that, you have to be extremely careful with the voxel layer. Although I don't have any footage of it, you could certainly get stuck in a few areas. In the shrouded area that's covered by a mist, you'll find resources that you don't find anywhere else on the map. Some of these are quite pivotal to actually how you build inside the game or even collect armor. And this is just inside the beta and a 10 or 12 hour demo, let alone access the entire map, which does have map borders that you can't get past during the demo. So it's a quite large map, and we don't know the full extent to how far you can even take your, your building and your crafting. 
Inside the shrouded area, you'll notice that you have a breath timer, so you have limited time to be able to be inside of the shrouded area, and that is if you don't clear it out by just finding the actual root and destroying it and the boss that's there. But even then, it doesn't go away immediately. In fact, during the entire playtesting, I don't even know if it clears up at all. From what I've been told, it takes time to clear up, and then the area becomes available to you so that you can do things inside of it, but you lose the resources and such. As I mentioned earlier, the map is quite large, and there are many enshrouded areas and ones that we couldn't even reach. But the map is so large, in fact, that they even give you early items in the game to traverse the world which includes a glider and a grappling hook. You can extend your time inside of the shroud by actually increasing your base size. Also something I didn't get footage of because I didn't get that done. But the flame that you put down for your house, which is very similar to V Rising, can actually grow in size and you can actually upgrade it as you go. The larger it is, the larger the plot of land that you have available to you, which is why I think the shrouded areas are important because I believe that you take them over and you can build on top of them, allowing you access to areas that have not only stunning views, but a lot of land for you to work with. You clear the area by finding the root in the area, which is typically guarded by a boss. Now the very first one that they give you is obviously easy sauce because they want you to experience the game and it's basically your tutorial area. And considering the size of the map, it's clearly going to go up from there. There's also puzzles inside of the enshrouded area that don't quite make sense to me yet, but we had very little time to check them out. For character development throughout all the things that you're doing, you do gain levels and points to be able to use in a skill tree. The skill tree, unfortunately, has some of your most basic skills in it, which means you have to spend the points in either to get the basic items for your character instead of branching it out into specialties. It does eventually branch out into specialties, but it would have been nice to have the basic items to start with and then moved up through a specialty tree from there. But that may not matter considering the content that we haven't seen in the game yet and the fact that there were items inside of the skill tree that we couldn't access specifically for the demo because it says blocked for the demo mode. We also currently don't know how many points that you can have and how much of this tree that you can fill out, but we do know that you can respec it at any time, which means that there will probably be limited points. And on top of that, it will give you the opportunity to make specific builds because of the items that it gives you with each one of the branches of the tree. So you can expect some hybrid builds. The good news to the approach that they took is that because the actual items that you buy are early in the branch tree, it does leave some builds, even if they are not working correctly, not feeling completely and utterly useless, which is not something we can say for something like Diablo 4, even though they're not even in the same genre of games. Overall, my experience with the demo was fantastic. I had a whole lot of fun with it. What's even more shocking is that you can share this experience with your friends. Technically, 16 of them per server. I'm not exactly sure how that will work in a co-op scenario, and I certainly don't understand how that pertains to the map, but considering it allows 16 players and allows you to do dedicated and private servers if you wanted to, there's something inside of the game that we clearly haven't seen yet that takes a very large amount of people to do anything with. That premise alone, along with the game design, really makes me wanting for more. I wish I had gotten more time with it, and I'm really looking forward to when the game actually releases. I haven't been able to tell if it's a free-to-play game or if the title's going to have an actual dollar amount attached to it. That's something we'll see in the future. For the meantime, I'm really looking forward to just watching how the title grows and how many more tests we get to be a part of. Did you guys get a chance to play the demo during Next Fest? If you did, I'd love to hear your comments down below about some of the things that you liked about the game and what you really wish they could change. Thank you again for checking out the video and remember to hit that subscription button and hit the bell notification to know when I put up a new video. Remember to tell your loved ones that you love them often. Thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.